Good morning, Shabbat Shalom, happy Sabbath to you all. Today is a wonderful day. Today is the day that the Lord has set aside for himself, a day he has set aside for us to rest in his presence and enjoy all the benefits he has in store and the many blessings he desires to pour out on us, his people. Um, it, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back sharing with you the word of the Lord. I've been out for almost a month and uh, there are times when the Lord calls us to be away. There are times when the Lord calls us to take a break and to rest and indeed it has been a great time for me just resting in the presence of the Lord and allowing him to minister to me and to fill me with his Holy Spirit. And so I am back with you this morning to continue the mission. I am back with you to continue the journey. And um, I pray that you will be blessed by what I will be sharing with you today. So for those of you who don't know me, I am Claudia Morgan Senior. And I'm Apostle and Director of Living Waters Apostolic Healing Ministries. In this ministry, we teach the Word of God in context, and our desire, intent, is that we walk in obedience to the Word of the Lord. And uh, as I've said times and times again, it's not that we do it perfectly, but the Lord works on the good desire of our hearts. I thank you for coming on to join with us this morning, and I pray that you will you know, subscribe to our channel and uh, be a part of this ministry as we study the word. And permit me to say, this is not about denomination. This is about the pure, undiluted word of God that is necessary for our personal development as we walk the journey with Yeshua, our Messiah. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Before I get, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Before I get into um, the teaching I want to share this morning, um, it is impressed on my heart, and for the next few weeks, I want to embark on a teaching series on the Sermon on the Mount, the Sermon on the Mount, or the Beatitudes as we know it. We read about that in Saint Matthew chapter five, I think, getting into chapter seven. The Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' most famous teaching, and it is also the most misunderstood. Yes, that is so true. And I believe that <clears throat> in understanding the original context of Jesus' teaching, teachings, it is critical for us to grow into a confident and mature disciple. We are not mere believers, hmm? but we are called his disciples. And the Hebrew word for disciples is Talmudim. We are called his Talmudim and we are expected to live our lives to, to mirror or to reflect the life of Yeshua, our Messiah. Um, you, you would have heard me call his name Yeshua over time. And because I use the Hebrew name, I use both. I say I'm Yeshua and I say Jesus. And so we are on the same wavelength, all right? Um, why is this study important that I want to be bringing on and sharing with you? It is important because we come to faith in a man who spoke a different language. Hmm? Yes, he was living in a different time and he was from a different culture and I believe our heart's desire is to truly know him and understand his mission and how we in our time reflect him and his fullness and the mission or the mandate he has placed on us. And we read about that in St. Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. We are commissioned to go forth, to make disciples, to teach all nations. And that is a mandate that is for us. And that should be our priority. So I'm excited about this. And I have some powerful insights and material to share from the Word of God. 
So would you join me? For a starter, in the first verse of Matthew chapter 5, we see that Jesus was having a discussion with his disciples, not the crowd. Okay? Not the crowd. So sometimes we have to move away from the crowd. The Lord, our Messiah, wanted to be with his disciples, so he went on a high mountain, on the high mountain. He wanted to be with his disciples, not the crowd, because he had instructions he wanted to give them. And these instructions were um, to help them along their, the journey of life in their ministry. And I, I believe that it is also important for us as a people. It is important for our own empowerment as we go through the different moments of our lives. I pray that um, you will be excited as I am on this journey. And... Uh, be a part of it, right? So next time we meet, I will be embarking on that series. Let me encourage you, don't let spiritual, your spiritual life stagnate for lack of knowledge. The word of God says my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. We are destroyed because sometimes we feel that I belong to a particular church, I belong to a particular group, I belong to a particular, but this is the word of God. This is where we, 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 we get our the source of nourishment from the word of God. So I say to you, don't let your spiritual life stagnate for lack of knowledge. Come on and be a part of this journey with us as we look at the sermon that Jesus taught his disciples on the mount. Amen. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking about life. We're going to be looking at life. Yeah. We're going to be looking at life and uh, as a journey through the different moments, yeah? the wilderness moments, the valley moments, the mountain moments. There are so many different moments, but today we want to be zeroing into the wilderness moments of life. And um, we know life is a journey. And it is generally full of challenges. The realities of life can be very hard, especially when it seems you are going through some wilderness experiences. A wilderness can be defined as a place of barrenness. It's a place of emptiness. It's a place of loneliness. It's a place that no one lives, no one dwells. It's that place there. And we enter the arena of life with its struggles and pains, but we also have this one determination. And it is that in spite of what we go through, we must win. Hmm? In spite of what we go through, we must be overcomers. In spite of what we go through, we must be victorious. In spite of the battles that we experience in our lives, we must win the battle. We must win. And we, we win not in our own strength or effort, but we depend on the leading of God and we depend on his Holy Spirit for his anointing. Amen. And so we, we, we can do it, people of God. Um, let us trust the Lord and trust in his word. The Apostle Paul, in his writings, he used the analogy of a runner in a race. And he used it to remind us that the running the race of life, mm, that um, there are many people in this race. He says, remember that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. In other words, you must also run in such a way that you will win. And that's the point I'm making. We are in this to win and we are going to win. Amen. The competitors in the race, they keep their eyes on the prize ahead, right? They keep their eyes on the goal. And so the trial and the dark moments you're going through is for your benefit. And you may say, how? 
Yeah, it is. It is for your benefit. And the, we, we, we may not see the fullness of it right now, but at some point in time in the journey, it, God is going to make it plain to you. It is for your benefit. And so I want you to know that God does not impose trials that are beyond the capacity of the individual. He's not going to give you more than you can bear. He's not going to give me more than I can bear. God tests only righteous people who will do his will. And a good reminder of that is Abraham. We remember the story of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, how the Lord called him to leave all behind, his family and everything behind, into a place, a land that he didn't even know of. Right? So God, when you face testings in life, learn this. God tests you because he knows you will survive. He knows he can count on you. He knows that you will not give in. He knows you will not surrender. He knows that you're going to, the, the end goal is always in mind. And his glory is going to be seen at the end of the day because of your faithfulness to him. Today I want to read a portion of scripture say, from St. Matthew chapter 4. It talks about the temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted, to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the, the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, that they will lift you up in their right hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. This is the word of the Lord. So we see in, 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 the, in the reading that um, Matthew gives an account of the temptations um, Satan presented to, to Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah, following his baptism in the Garden of um, in the Garden, in the Jordan River, I'm sorry. And we read about that in St. Matthew chapter 3. Yeshua is the perfect example for us to determine our action and reaction in times of trials and testings. He is the one we look at. We cling to the fact that Yeshua prefaced every rejection of the temptations by saying it is written. And he did that three times from the text. There is more in the word than physical bread. Sometimes we look at that which is physical and we fail to see that which is spiritual. And we must always remember that we are a spiritual people. We have the physical aspect of us, but we are a spiritual people on a spiritual journey. And so we cannot allow what happens in the natural to define that which is spiritual for us. Amen. So we have to get to the point where we know the word, right? And so as we study the scripture, we'll see the similarities of when God brought Israel into the wilderness, right? This is a very familiar um, story when the Lord took Israel out of Egypt and they went through the wilderness. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. 
But God made a promise to Israel. He promised them his covenant blessings and he also promised his curses. And we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 28. <coughs> right? Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. Israel had the power of choice. They, they had it to choose life or they had it to choose the curses that were there. So in the wilderness, he tested them, Israel that is. But Israel failed to obey the word of God who redeemed them out of Egypt. Therefore, they failed to obtain the covenant blessings. People of God, I want you to mark this down. I want you to write this down because I want us to understand that the blessings that we desire is hinged only on our obedience to God. It is important that we understand that. It is important that we know that. In spite of what so many others want to teach and tell you, it is important that we know that our blessing is hinged to our obedience to God, right? And so as we look at the text, we see that Yeshua, he begins his ministry in the wilderness. Mm? The first chapter, for, in the fourth chapter of Matthew, we see um, his ministry beginning in the wilderness. For 40 days and 40 nights, he was tempted by the enemy. But what we will understand is that he came to do what Israel failed to do. He came to show us the way that Israel did not see. He came to the wilderness in order to demonstrate to us that we can overcome the trials and the testings of life when we go through the wilderness moments of our lives. All right? And so as we, we look at the text, we, we, we see three times the enemy tempted Yeshua. And on the on, on this three occasions, he fought back, not in his own strength, but with the word of God. He applied the word. And where did he learn the word? Because he now referenced the Torah. On three occasions, he referenced the Torah. And that is why it is important, people of God, that we study the word of God in context from the very beginning of the Bible. Amen. So, as disciples of Yeshua, we have a responsibility to take the word and to use the word. It means then that we must spend time in the word because the only weapon against the enemy is the word of God. There's a hard truth here though. Not many of us spend time in applying, in reading and applying the word of God. Matthew tells us that Jesus appealed to the scripture from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. The book of Deuteronomy summarizes the lessons that God taught is the Israelites during the time of their sojourn in the wilderness. Jesus taught what Israel should Jesus taught us hmm, what Israel should have taken the truth um, that God's word is what is going to sustain us as we go through the wilderness of our lives. It is important that we, we get that. Israel failed because they murmured, they complained, they did the opposite of everything God instructed them. But Yeshua came and he now demonstrates in a practical way how it can be done. And so the journey for the Israelites, we read the story and the book of Numbers tells the story of their journey from Mount Sinai to Canaan, the promised land. 40 long years in the wilderness. Did you know they didn't have to stay that long in the wilderness? 
No, but because they refused to walk in obedience, it took them longer than it should. So along the way, the children of Israel, they faced tests, they faced challenges, and as they progressed toward their ultimate destination, the land of promise, the a lot happened in between, right? They faced failures, they faced triumphs, and they learned important lessons, timeless lessons, which is also instructive for us as we navigate our own way through our wilderness to our eternal destination. Many people come into the walk of faith and, uh, and we're not prepared. Many come into this walk of faith and we're not prepared for the testings and the trials because we have been taught a quick fix. We have been taught a kind of microwave gospel that says when you type, I receive, or when you say, when you type, amen, things happen suddenly. And the, the word of God doesn't teach this, you know. And what happened is that when these promises are not fulfilled, People become disillusioned and the people become shattered and many actually lose faith and confidence in God. Today I want to encourage your heart that you get into the word of God and understand what it is, the journey through the wilderness because we must go through wilderness experiences in our lives. The children of Israel, they leave Egypt and they went through the wilderness before they could enter into the promised land. So the journey from Egypt to the promised land is similar to our spiritual journey through life. And just as Israel began, <clears throat> just as Israel's journey began, when God liberated them from physical Egypt, our spiritual journey begins when Yeshua liberated us from the spiritual Egypt of this world. Just as God brought Israel to Mount Sinai to receive the holy instructions and that would set them apart as different from the other nations of the world, Yeshua or Messiah brings us to the revelation of a deeper understanding of the world. Amen? He is the word made flesh. He is the holy Torah that put on flesh and he dwell among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, full, I'm sorry, of grace and truth. So in the text that I read earlier, we see Yeshua overcoming the enemy by using the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I want you to take note of this. It is not the word that anybody else conceive or say. It is the word that comes from the mouth of God. Word has creative power, right? And we saw that in the book of Genesis how God spoke and things happened. Just as Israel's goal was the promised land, our ultimate destination is eternal life in, 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 in God. It is eternal life in Yeshua, our Messiah. And so as we continue the journey, we face testings, trials, all manner of adventures and eventualities we face them all but like the children of Israel we must be prepared because we are on a spiritual journey and we're going to come upon things that we're not even prepared for we're gonna face warfare mm? spiritual warfare we're gonna face temptations we're going to face discontentments and hardships. We're going to face them all, people of God. But we need to understand that God is with us and he's not going to leave us, not even for a moment. As with the Israelites in the wilderness, 
our success and our failure is determined by our reaction, our action and reaction to the trials we face in life. When we go through the moments, are we still going to hold on to the word of God? When we go through the moments, are we going to cling to the word of God? When we go through the moments, are we going to speak the word of God? Amen. The Apostle Peter teaches that the trial of your faith hmm, is more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We know the processing of gold. It, it has to go through many processes, but when it is done with, we get gold. And so the apostle Peter used the trial of our faith and he said it is precious. So I want us to understand that when we go through trials, it's a precious thing because we are, what we are experiencing is God, is God giving us the grace and the anointing to strategize and to overcome the plots and the plans of the enemy. You know, the generation of, of Israelites who left um, Mount Sinai, not all of them entered the promised land. Why? Because of how they approach trials, because of how they, 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 they look at trials, because they thought it was bad, and they thought that God was not with them, and they, they believed that Aaron, Moses and Aaron took them from Egypt to die, for them to die, to kill them off in the wilderness. And so we see from the scripture that it was only the younger generation under 20 who actually get into the promised land. And so we see we have to be careful what we speak because the word of God says life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? The Israelites, they kept saying we're going to die in the wilderness. We're going to die in the wilderness. And because of what they repeatedly said, they actually die in the wilderness. And so people of God, let us learn from this and let us be careful how we speak because words have creative power. If we choose to be negative and speak negatively over your situation, then it is natural you're going to get negative results. Amen? If we speak positive, then we're gonna, we're gonna get some positive results. That's how it is. We have um, the cycles that we go through in life, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, the light and the darkness. All of these things make up life. But we have, we have a destiny right and we have to preserve this as we go through the moments the journey through life spiritual wilderness is filled with difficulties yes the difficulties are there i'm telling you and dangers right but one thing we know is that when we go through we have we have the word of god with us the psalmist david said the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? And so today, people of God, I want us to consider the journey as a race. Consider it as of a race. The apostle, the apostle Paul says, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not run to win unless he competes according to the rules. Yes, there are rules. There are instructions. And there are guidelines, there are principles that we must apply to our personal life. If we want to win spiritually, we must be prepared to make all these applications that we see in scripture. We need to be mindful of the Bible's rule for the journey. God has given us a manual. He has given us instructions as how we should live instruction for life and godly living 
It all starts with God and it ends with him, people of God. He is the beginning, he is the end, he is the alpha, the omega, the first, the last. He is everything that is in between. That's the God we serve. The, pro the prophet Isaiah said he knows the end from the beginning. And so we are here by his divine purpose. And we're also here to fulfill his divine purpose. It is not about us. It is about him. Amen. And so it is in him, really, that we live. We move, we have our beam. It is in him that we experience the fullness of our lives. And our very existence as a people absolutely depends on him, the one who self-exists, the one who is sovereign, the one who is from the beginning of creation, the one who spoke the word, my God, and the, wor the world was created. And so, people of God, I want to encourage you today as you go through your trials, as you go through your situations, that you remain faithful. In, as you go through the, your wilderness experiences in times of troubles, that you remain faithful. When you go through periods of what seem like abandonment, periods of loneliness, I want you to remember the end goal of this journey. Remember the walk. Remember the purpose to which you are called. And so, yeah, some, you may ask, how, so how am I supposed to act during these seasons of life? How am I supposed to survive? How am I supposed to win this battle? Yeah, when sometimes it feels as if God himself is not there with us. You know, Yeshua, he provided multiple instructions as to how we can and should remain faithful and how we should maintain the path of being a disciple even in difficult moments of our lives. And that is why I'm encouraging you to be a part of the upcoming session as we go back to the Sermon on the Mount because there it is loaded with a lot of instructions and encouragement that is going to help us to forge our way through these dark moments and difficult times as we go through. Because the thing is, people of God, we must remain faithful and we must endure. So Yeshua, he, he says to his, he taught his disciples, he said, stay dressed for action. Yeah? And keep your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. And we read that in Luke chapter 12, verse 35 through 36. We must live with the anticipation. We must live with the expectation that, yes, Messiah is coming back and we have to be ready our garments must be spotless. Our garments must be pure as we await the return of our master. Amen. He further went on and he says in Mark chapter 13, um, 33 up to 37, he says, be on guard. You're going through difficult moments, but be on guard. You're going through your wilderness, but keep Aware, be aware of what is happening. Stay awake, for you do not know when the time, <clears throat> I'm sorry, will come. He said, it is like a man going on a journey. And when he leaves home, he puts his servants in charge and he gives them work and he commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. And so the point is, stay awake. You cannot allow to be sleeping in these moments. Mm -mm. There is too much at risk. There is too much to lose. You have to stay awake. He said, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, whether he's going to come in the evening, at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning. He said, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And I want to say to you all, stay awake. 
That was the instructions Yeshua gave to his disciples as he encouraged them, you know, about the path, the journey that they were going on, this ministry journey. Um, it is not the way, it doesn't work the way we feel it should. It doesn't always work that way. And so we must always be ready and we must stay awake. And so I encourage you, and it is with what we need to understand is that, you know, we look at trials and we say they are bad. They're not bad. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that God gave trials to those whom we can trust. And that is why you're going through those moments right now, because he can trust you and he knows that you will stand up for him. Um, what we need to understand is that being a disciple, it gives us the advantage, you know, during hard times. Because we know one thing for sure, it doesn't matter how bad things get. We know that God is in control and he is working steadfastly to carry out his plan. He is in control. You are not in control. God is in control. And I want to say to you today that God have your back. Amen. So be alert. Be alert, people of God. Continue strong in the faith. Have courage and be strong. Don't give up. We're in a time, you know, the pandemic COVID-19 has revealed a lot. And what, I, what we're seeing is a lot of shifting and people are changing. And people, it's like, we can't, we have, we have become so unreliable and we are becoming selfish in what we do. And we really don't care much about our brothers and our sisters anymore. We don't care about our neighbors. But no, is not the time. No, is the time when we should be alert. Be alert and stay awake as we go through these moments. We, I mentioned the children of Israel that, you know, um, in spite of their failures, in spite of their failures, God did not send them back to Egypt. Yeah, he did not send them back to Egypt because God's intent is that we come to acknowledge him. His desire is that we come to know him and that we come to make repentance and come back in fellowship with him. So he didn't send Israel back to Egypt, right? He used um, Moses and Aaron as a source of encouragement to show them the way to guide them in the path of holiness. And today we have the word of God. <clears throat> we have the word of God. It's our guide to lead us in the path of righteousness, the path of holiness. Like Israel this morning, I encourage you, you know, going through the hard moments, let us not, let us not, let us not become rebellious. Let us not become complainers. Let us not become, you know, um, who we are not supposed to be because we are set apart for God's glory. We are set apart for his glory. And, and, and we, have, we have a responsibility to be light to those who are in darkness. Because, you see, when we go through the trials of life, we are going to have testimonies to give. And we overcome by our testimonies. Somebody need to hear that testimony. Somebody need to know that yes, God is faithful and he will remain faithful forevermore. And so today, um, I, I, I need to also make the point that when we go against the word of God, there, there are consequences hmm, for our conduct. There are consequences for our conduct, but the reward for those who will stay the course is rich. And so, people of God, I encourage you today to hold on. 
hold on to the promises, hold on to the blessings, hold on to the word of God. He is with you. You are not alone on the journey. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> Thank you for listening. And remember to join with me when next we meet as we start a new series in getting to know Yeshua better. And it will help us to fulfill the mandate and the call that he has placed upon us. Thank you very much. God bless you.